What's up, ladies and germs? All right, listen. I just realized something because I keep getting this question, right? And I've been to a lot of countries around the world the last, I want to say, 20 years. And the number one question I keep getting, especially about the ladies, is it easy to talk to the women there? Are the women friendly? And I'm like, what? If you only knew. <laughs> And I'm going to get into why, how, a couple of stories here and there for you. But before I do, hit that like button now. Thank you to those who support by purchasing my ebooks, payhip.com slash riches method. Those who support in the PayPal, Cash App, and drop the super thanks below. Let's go. So the other night, I'm sitting in a bar in Cali, Colombia, in San Antonio. Now this bar, when you first walk in, it's kind of like a dive bar. It's been around 80 years. And in the back area is a small restaurant looking setting with tables. And then there's a few tables up in like a loft setting. I'm sitting by myself in like a two person chair and table. And I've got my Cuba Libre with me. I look up, two Spanish girls walk in, two Colombian girls. And one of them just says, hello, in English. I respond automatically in Spanish, Hola, como estas? Fellas, yes is the answer. All right, so let me get a rundown on this. You know, let's face it. Typically, if I tell you, yeah, everybody friendly to us, your first thing you're going to say is, yeah, you know, it's because of the money. And that it might be true. But I'm going to tell you, it's not only that, and it's probably not necessarily first, last, or indifferent. It's just part of a whole overall thing. So first, let me answer the question up front. Yes, some countries more than others, and every single one of the countries, it was easier to approach and talk to people in that culture. So... I'm going to break this down very short for the male part. Men will talk to you easy and make friends with you in these countries. Why? I'm going to get into that later. Let's hit what we're really here for. The ladies. The ladies will talk to you easy too. And there's a reason why. Think about this. When's the last time you watch a movie? When is the last time you listen to music? When is the last time you jump on the internet? And when you did, where was most of the movies from? Where was the content on the internet from? And where was most of the artists and music that is popular around the world mostly from? Easy answer. First, the biggest consumer place in the world. The United States, number one tops down for music, movies, and any kind of entertainment. And also some of the biggest companies in the world are in that country, right? So right now you're watching YouTube or you're listening to a podcast. If you're watching YouTube, it's owned by Google. That's an American country, uh, company. Any, uh, any and most of the podcast companies out there are also what? Owned by Google or owned by some other American company, right? Spotify, whatever it might be. The rest of the world, when you're born there, and I'm in a perfect position to speak on this because clearly I was born in South America, in Guyana, right? And then lived most of my life in the United States. So I've seen the culture from both sides. And let me tell you, when I was a kid, we used to bootleg HBO in my country. And how do I mean by this? We had our own local TV station, but this dude literally used to pirate. <laughs> <laughs> different movies, different series, different for women, the, um, what do they call, like the Young and the Restless, you know, all these uh, sitcoms and all these, um, I forget what they call it for the ladies, somebody put a comment down below as to what it's called, you know, them, day, them daytime lovey-dovey shows that all the women at 12 o'clock noon would just sit around the TV and watch Young and the Restless and all these things, right? All of those things used to come from the United States. That was the biggest producer. Maybe you get a few things from Canada, a couple of movies from Australia, but even in the movies that came out of America, you know, let's say you're watching like a James Bond movie, 
James Bond ended up in all these fly locations, right? Australia, France, some exotic location in some island with a beautiful girl. But all those movies are pretty much produced in England and the United States. So no matter where you are in this God's green earth, if you're watching TV, if you're hooked up to the internet and you're listening to music, your media comes from those places. So people just got an interest in people from that place. So like you could walk into a bar or a restaurant anywhere that you go in the world if you're from one of these major countries and once people realize where you're from they're like where are you from the united states where are you from canada you're from england whatever it might be if you've had that experience drop it in the comment i don't even care if you went to a um you know all-inclusive resort in jamaica somewhere the maid somebody be like oh you from that place where you from interest and this could be a male and a female, right? So we ain't even talking about romantically. We're just talking about people's interests. I was watching a documentary um, a couple months back, and I found it interesting that it was a country in Africa. And when they were talking to these young kids who were doing like mini buses, which is just basically buses transporting people, they had names for their buses. And one guy was like, yeah, well, my bus is 50 cent. And he got a big picture painted on the side. He had another dude who had John claude Van Damme. Somebody had Hulk. They were naming their buses and stuff like that off of their favorite artists, favorite movie, favorite action star, Transformers, whatever it might be. Everybody know Michael Jordan. Everybody knows Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola is the most well-known brand in the world, right? Where was that company started? The United States. So that is how in people's mind they're already programmed to want to know and be interested in your countries, right? All right. So, I'm going to give another example of how easy and friendly it is when it comes to countries, depending on how you approach. When I'm in Colombia, if I'm just walking down the street, I just can't be like, hey, what's up, girl? Blah, 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 blah. It'll be a little harder, right? Because obviously, Colombia had a past. If I'm in Dominican Republic, I could probably do that a little easier. They're used to tourism, too, on top of that. A lot of parts of Colombia, the average person don't really see tourists like that. They've got to go into a tourist area, or they know there's a few foreigners there, but they don't really care. They are on the opposite side. The majority of their money is made from oil and definitely tourism, right? So everybody knows, and it's a smaller island, 6 million people. Colombia, just one city like Medellin, got like 4.5, 5 million people. Cali got like three to four million people. Man, it's crazy. Brazil. I've never been to Brazil. However, I was lucky enough to be born in Guyana, right? So Brazil is right below Guyana. And even growing up, a lot of Brazilians who was living in the favelas and not living such a great life, they would come and work in Guyana, right? In gold, in diamond, uh, wherever jobs they could find, usually. Mining, these kind of things. Then girls would come and work in the strip clubs, right? So you had a lot of Brazilians, and they were really friendly and easy to talk to. Venezuela, same thing. I've never been. A bunch of Venezuelans, because they're next door, they used to come over and even more recently comes into Guyana, right? Same thing. They work usually in barbershops, massage parlors, strip clubs. They put up little stalls and sell, you know, uh, their version of like Spanish hot dogs, empanadas, a whole bunch of stuff. Same thing. Friendly people, man. Now, let's compare that to the West. I remember when I first moved from like New York to Florida. And I remember this old little white lady, hello, how are you? In the morning, I was like, yeah, hey, hey, how you doing? But honestly, the culture is so stringent over there. I personally found it to be kind of strange and weird. So I'm a little bit cautious. Like, what is my first instinct is like, what does woman want from me? Now, you know, in a place like the United States, you'll say hi or hello to your neighbors, right? But if you see them. And in New York, shoot, you might not even know your neighbors. But at the end of the day, you ain't gonna like invite them into your house necessarily. You gotta know them for a while. The culture is just more cautious, a little bit more subdued. A lot of times people don't know how the people. If you're living in a part of the United States where you truly know your neighbors and y'all actually go to each other's houses and stuff like that, man, consider yourself lucky, right? The bigger the city gets, the more cold it gets also where people don't really know each other. I'm gonna compare that to what happens to a lot of guys when they go to a place like DR. Soon they start telling a girl, they're shocked and they're like, well, this girl can't be lying to me because, you know, I, I talked to her mom. I talked to her cousin. I was invited. They cooked for me. They don't understand also that they could have done that to another Dominican person that they met, man. The culture is just that way. Everybody just be chilling, organized. Hey, I'm going to invite you over. You seem like a cool person. 
I could tell you honestly that's how it also was in my original country and still is. Once people think you're a good person, they're like, hey, man, yeah, let me buy you a couple of beers. Oh, th th this is my wife. Hey, come by on a Sunday. We could all hang out, have some beers in my house. The wife automatically goes and cook or a family member or wherever. They'll share their food with you. Same in Jamaica, you know, as long as you ain't in the hood somewhere. And even in the hood, man, you'd be surprised if you're a foreigner. You ride up in the uh, they'll be like, hey, let's go back by this bar. You might be the one paying, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it's just friendliness all around. And that is what I want to tell you guys, man. Your options when you go abroad is paramount. It's great. You'll enjoy yourself, and it is easier for you to interact and talk to and connect with other people and the ladies. They're generally not going to just out of nowhere give you bad attitude um, you know, they're not as closed off. Now, if you go to a place like Columbia, you might got to meet the girl at her job. You might got to meet somebody who introduced you to somebody else. You know, in some kind of environment where they know you're not just some stranger literally on the road trying to talk to you. Right? Now, in other countries that got tourism, the islands, no friendly people and all that. Whether it's Trinidad, Jamaica, Dominican Republic. Psh, bro, you could just see a girl walking down the road. Hey, how you doing? Whether in Spanish, English, you know, if you go to some of the English Caribbean countries, man, people tend to forget that we got those, <laughs> you know, same thing, all right? So, guys, give this video 400 likes. Don't forget to check my ebooks on travel. I want to give shout-outs, but, you know, I'll give a shout-out in the future when people hit up the Cash app. I'll call you all by first name and, like, last initial or something like that. Don't forget to subscribe. Share this video with everybody, and I'll check you guys on the next one.